Hi, I'm Stian Hoklev. I work at the Chile Lab at EPFL, and we're working on a project called Frog, which uh, enables you to author and run uh, complex scenarios with uh, collaborative learning. So this could be a typical scenario. On the top left, you see a teacher uh, with uh, a graph of activities and uh, data flow. And uh, you see three windows of students who are engaged in some kind of uh, uh, knowledge activity where they're moving around or clustering ideas and they also have uh, access to a chat. So this is a fairly complex interface and uh, we're actually working on redesigning it. Uh, we think it's uh, very exciting. However, one of the things I've been thinking as I've been talking to other research groups and other people uh, interested in uh, online learning or technology-enhanced learning is that there seems to be this underlying concept of very rich embeddable activities, which is uh, separate from our concept of an orchestration graph of a data flow, but which is still much richer than what you find today with, for example, LTI. So if we imagine a concept map activity, or a tool, or a widget, um, first of all, we want it to be configurable. So if you are the teacher, we want you to be able to quickly say, should students only connect existing ideas? Uh, should they be able to add new ideas? Um, you know, there might be different ways you can control their interaction, and so on. And this is uh, very important and often not the case with existing Web 2.0 tools that were not designed for education. And even for so many that were designed for education. Um, we would like most of the tools to enable uh, collaboration, uh, ideally live syncing of data and so on. This is almost never the case other than in some specialized tools like Google Docs, which are not very configurable and uh, not very flexible okay um, while you are while the students are engaging with the tool we would like some streaming learning analytics we want to be told right away what is happening um, because we would like perhaps to visualize that for the teacher we want to perhaps uh, enable automated uh, interventions based on some uh, intelligent system and the teacher might want to take some actions um, maybe he wants to pause all the running activities to make an announcement, or maybe he wants to reorganize the groups. And finally, in Frog, we have this concept of data flow. The idea that data produced in one kind of activity can be reused in another kind of activity. So, for example, you could have a tool that lets you add and vote up and down ideas, and you could then take those that list of ideas and bring it into a concept mapping tool. Uh, this, of course, adds some complexity because you need to ensure that uh, the tools speak the same um, data types. But when done properly, it can enable really new kinds of flexible learning. Uh, so ideally, we would like these tools to have some concept of data coming in from an external source and data coming going out. So in other words, getting access to the result of what the students did, uh, whether that is uh, the final concept map in some readable JSON format uh, or whatever. So it seems to me that these are generally very, very useful properties and that there might be a range of different platforms that could benefit from having something like this. Yet I could not find an existing standard uh, really providing even almost any of these. Um, the closest uh, we're getting is really with the streaming learning analytics because of the emergence of the XAPI standard. And at this point, I was inspired by a recent project called H5P, which enables you to author content. Um, this is, the activity types are more, I would say, for content delivery. Uh, but much richer and more interactive content delivery than uh, we are used to. Uh, but the activity types are enable you to edit very easily on the website. For example, I can go in and they have an interactive video editor. And this is the example provided by the H5P 
uh, foundation. So they have this video and uh, they have pre-configured some, for example, some uh, quizzes, uh, some different activities, fill in the blanks, drag and drop quiz, um, recipe, and so on. Um, and a very nice thing is that it's easy to embed the, the resulting um, activity on any website and it actually does a very smart thing, which is that it streams, or at least some of the activities, stream XAPI statements from the iframe to the parent window, um, which would seem to make it um, quite feasible to integrate with uh, a learning management system and actually get real-time access to the logs. So I was inspired by this and I wanted to see whether we could make standalone activities in Frog. Uh, so right now, you know, until this moment, Frog has really been a graph where you have these individual activities, but they are connected. Uh, they are maybe working for so in specific social groups. They have some data flow. There's a sequence, and it has not been possible to run a single uh, Frog activity outside of the system. But uh, I've uh, made a prototype of how this could happen. So right now. We have uh, we can we can try to design an activity in the graph editor. Uh, so you can, for example, add a new activity, and then you have a choice of different um, activity types, and these are fully pluggable. So you can install new activity types as they become available. Um, let's say we would like an image viewer, which is actually more of a gallery, and we would like students to be able to upload new images and to be able to comment on the images that they upload. And we want to say, uh, please share your mathematics notes. Uh, what is interesting about this note? So this is uh, the configuration that I mentioned. These uh, configuration options are specific to this activity type, but um, all of the configuration is done in a standardized format in a unified place. And now I can actually preview the activity that I just configured uh, with some existing uh, content. So we have some uh, images here, but I could uh, open the webcam, take a picture, um, click on it, add a comment, and I can basically see how this uh, activity would work in real life. So if I think that uh, this is interesting and I would like to use this with my students, but I would not like to run a frog graph. I would just like to, for example, take this activity and embed it inside edX, inside Moodle, right? I will click on this button, which will generate a URL that encodes all of the configuration information that I have um, entered here. And if I now go to a new window, and I paste in this URL that I just generated, we see that we get access to this activity with no logging in, no concept of, of users from Frog's side, uh, and no problem. And, and of course, it's, it's fully functional. And as I said, it's important for us that activities enable live collaboration. And all frog activities basically do that. So if I open a second window and I paste in the same URL, then we have two instances that can communicate with each other. So if I take a picture on one side, it shows up on the other. If, the, if I start editing on one side, it's uh, available on the other side, of course. Um, however, you might not want all of the students in the same class to be in the same group. So we can tell Frog that by opening a new window. And now I'm going to paste the same URL, but I'm going to change the instance ID to 2. Now this could be any arbitrary ID. And now we have two new students, and they are in the same group. So they can, of course, uh, communicate with each other. But uh, they are separate from this group up here. And if you wanted each student to have an individual 
um, to, to work individually, then uh, you would just give uh, the student ID as the instance ID and they would all be in their, their own private space. But of course, an advantage of this is that if you reload, um, you don't lose what you're working on. Um, so this is where I started out and already I thought um, I had something interesting. Then I thought about uh, how we could move beyond uh, using the existing Frog platform to configure these activities if we want to embed this deeply into another system. So the first thing was to generate a, a very simple API that just gives us a list of all the built-in activities. Well, they're not built-in, but all the activities that a given Frog instance has available. And so we could imagine um, an external learning management tool using this to generate a menu um, for someone to choose. Um, and then it comes to actually doing the configuration. And uh, although Frog uses a JSON schema, and theoretically it would be possible to just um, send out that JSON schema uh, uh, definition and let uh, an external tool handle the display. Uh, the reality is that we do a lot of extra things when it comes to things like conditional fields and also validating the input. And uh, for now, I'm experimenting with um, letting you embed the actual config form as an iframe. So if you were a, a tool and you wanted Let's say that I chose, um, I want a text area where students can collaboratively edit something. Uh, then I would uh, say, go to this URL. And uh, I would then present a um, form for the designer to fill in. However, where does this data go as I'm filling in the form? Well. This is where I was inspired by H5P and the way they made the child iframe talk to the parent iframe, uh, which I'm using for a few different um, things. So I will show you this now. I, to test this, I made a very simple app just based on the Create React App tool. Um, so this is a very simple demo app that has no dependencies on Frog or H5P or any shared libraries. It's simply, um, it's basically HTML plus a little bit of a state. And this is to show you, first of all, here's that H5P component that I mentioned, uh, that I actually showed you as I was editing. And if we now play this video, then it works perfectly. I will turn off the turn off the sound, and if I skip here and I go into the multiple choice quiz, we see here an XAPI statement generated by H5P, which is inside this iframe, and captured by uh, my app, uh, which, is, which is here, um, ha which has information saying I am now interacting with some kind of a multiple choice activity, which has this question. And if I answer, and check my answer. Again, there's a new XAPI statement that says what are the choices I made. Uh, I chose one. These were the choices I had available. Um, and that is, in fact, wrong. Okay. Um, so as you can see, this is um, very clear information that, uh, and also in a, in a standardized format, which I could use just to log, or I could even use it to inform uh, future things. Um, if I wanted to change what happened based on whether the student got an answer right or wrong. Uh, so we can just uh, continue here. And here's a drag and drop quiz. And I will say that I should put the strawberry. If I show score, again, you see here that um, I completed, but um, I'm not doing very well. Uh, my success is false, right? So very nice, uh, rich um, activities. Um, that then can be integrated like this. So that is H5P now on the same web page, and this is part of my point, is showing that we can have different kinds of activities from different systems actually integrated a little bit in the same way. So these are just a few um, simple URLs that I, uh, with these uh, pre-configured activities. Um, so for example, here is a very simple quiz. Now you'll see two things here. 
One is the data, and this is kept in sync with the underlying data of this um, form. So as I see, as I change the answer, this will update immediately. However, there is also the log data, which is um, rendered every time I actually take an action or uh, the activity wants to log something. And this is not yet XAPI format. Um, this is that's something we are investigating, but for now it, it still is, is pretty clear about what is happening. Um, and so we can uh, change and we see that uh, the data always keeps up to date with the current state. And whereas the log data tells you about how we got to the current state. And the log data, again, it could be sent back to my server as an owner of uh, this test bed and integrated with my other analytics. It could feed into some kind of a live dashboard for a teacher um, and so on. Here's another example of a little video. And uh, this one, you see that it keeps track of where the student is in the, in the data, but it also logs continuously. For example, if the student pauses, uh, we see here that um, a pause has been logged and uh, when it jumps and starts again uh, this is all captured in the log and here you know the current state of of the, um, the video here's another example uh, this is our old friend uh, the the image uploader and again you see here the current state which is which um, which images are available, um, what, their, what their file names are, and so on. And then if I, for example, zoom on this image, we see here that that was uh, logged. But of course, it didn't change anything in the underlying data structure. So again, we have access to both of those. Um, I started by talking about how we could configure activities uh, using uh, using frog and using the config form in an iframe and here's an example of that so this is a configuration for the quiz activity and it also checks automatically whether the configuration is valid so right now you see that the valid it's not valid you see an error uh, sent through the api but you also see a visual indication here and if you mouse over it it says you must have at least one question Okay, so let's uh, solve that. Let's say elephant. We can shuffle the questions to make it uh, more difficult for students to cheat, but we don't need to do that. However, we will say um, stay honest and we will a little image. And then we will add a question and we will say uh, what kind of an elephant is this? And we'll include a YouTube video. And we'll say it's either an African or an Indian elephant. So now we have a uh, quiz fully configured. We see here it's green, which means that it's a valid config, um, which means that we can either um, now copy this address and we can open it in a new tab. And uh, we see here that it's um, rendering all the things that we asked for. Uh, again, it's something that you can do collaboratively if you want the students to do that. And so here you see that their answers are synced if they are in the same instance. But of course, if you wanted them to not uh, work together, you will simply add the, give one student another instance. If you want to expose the activity selector from Frog, you can also choose do that. It uh, shows all the activities just like I showed you. You can uh, quickly um, filter and then simply say, I want to chat. Uh, we say we want to chat about elephants. And again, we have now a fully configured activity that uh, we can use. Um, the final thing I'll show you, and I don't expect this to be very useful in practice because it depends on having another platform which also supports um, this information flow. But if we assume that we have um, some uh, interesting activities, um, for example, we have this brainstorm where students can enter ideas and uh, they can vote them up and down and so on. But we can also begin this activity with a list of 
ideas that we want the students to access. So uh, we simply add that to the API call and uh, in that way um, we already have several ideas and the students can now collaboratively um, vote them up or down or add more ideas depending on our configuration. I'll show you one other tool before we finish. We have this um, tool that lets you um, add ideas and organize them. In this case, we're using a background image, which is the research lifecycle. So I could say um, open access, and I want to put that here on publication. But again, we can pre-fill this with uh, data coming from somewhere else. So we might have had two different groups that were uh, brainstorming what the challenges and opportunities are for open access. Again, we can do this collaboratively. And now the teacher can, uh, can explore uh, which categories he or she wants to show. And the students can uh, collaboratively decide where, uh, where the different uh, elements belong. And of course, this is also generating the log data that I was showing you before. So this is very preliminary, uh, just an experiment with what is possible. Um, all of the APIs are highly subject to change, and I'm excited about making them more standards compliant. Um, one of my current ideas is to use the LTI API for um, making the initial calls, because it al already provides um, a form of uh, uh, verification of the of the call by the uh, by a shared secret between the API user and the API provider, um, but I would be very happy to discuss with anyone who has uh, ideas around this. Thank you very much.